Hallelujah. We're going home. Um, yeah, we just came in and explained everything needs to happen. And I'm sorry, I had to bring stuff to the truck. And we, uh, she's good to go. They're expecting her to make a good recovery at home and nothing, no surprises uh, by the scans that we had. They didn't really explain in detail, but they said it was she was moving in the right direction. So that's all that matters, right? So thanks, guys. All right. Hey guys, I figured we'd do an update video since we've been, um, I forgot to count before I started the video. How many days have we been out? Um, really not sure, but it feels good to be home. So there's yeah. that. So she spent 10 days, the 10th day we got to come home. Um, figured we'd recap for those of you who are just catching up with this. I noticed on Facebook that there are people still asking questions. I even noticed that there are people still answering some of the earlier videos saying they're still praying and wanting to know what's happened not realizing that they could check the youtube and so which is all good so figure we recap real fast so she had her her surgery scheduled for uh i think it was like the 13th or something like that it was the wednesday yeah and then um the week prior leading up to that it was like a thursday i think uh the doctor made you stop taking your excedrin Mm -hmm. And um, for whatever reason, that just triggered everything to just, you know, all heck broke loose and the pressure began to rapidly build, uh, apparently. Um, yeah, you were hurting pretty bad. Yes, very, 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 very bad pain. Probably the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Yeah, I can, and I can vouch for what I saw. It looked awful. So uh, finally, after her being hard-headed, I talked her into going to the ER because she did not want to go. Um, I found out that there is an acute cancer, um, emergency acute cancer. It's the ER for MD Anderson, but it's not called an emergency room. It's called acute cancer treatment or something like that. Um, so if anybody's watching this, that's following the VHL stuff. Um, yeah, MD Anderson. It's not called an emergency room. Nowhere in the titles or any verbiage is it called an emergency room. It's called an acute cancer center or treatment center. And But that is exactly what it is. It's an emergency room for you to just come in when things are bad. So I figured that out. So I rushed her in. Uh, what was that? See, Tuesday, Monday, Sunday, um, Saturday, Friday. So five days. It was late night. It actually turned into... Sunday, so it was only four days early. So late Saturday night, I took her in. <clears throat> they loaded her up on everything that they could till they couldn't give her any more. Um, what, morphine and the all, all kinds of stuff, but unfortunately, none of it helped. So yeah, yeah. At one point, I was like, just quit giving me stuff because it's it's not helping. Yeah. It was awful, awful to watch. Um, but. We had the surgery scheduled and um, she was pretty adamant when she was conscious. I don't want to do, I don't want anybody to operate on me except for my surgeon. Uh, so that was kind of tough. But by the time they got the CT scan done, it turned out that she had to have a procedure done. Um, but she was so basically doped up at that point. Um, I just had to make a call for her. The doctor quit talking to her completely because she, she was so, she was so out of it just hurting. I don't remember this, so. <laughs> yeah. Which is why they quit talking to me, but anyway. Yeah. So the procedure they had to do, um, I'm, I'm just, I can't help but get graphic because it's crazy, but the uh, procedure they had to do was go in uh, and drill a hole in her skull and relieve the pressure. They put a tube in to drain the, the uh, uh, brain slash spinal fluid off of her uh, ventricles out of the area that was building up. And uh, they did that while she was awake, he, but she was pretty doped up, but she was still awake and conscious uh, for it. And I think she remembers some of that. That I do remember. Very, very weird. I yeah. do remember that though. What was that like? Um, well, the patient part of me, it kind of scared me. Um, very weird, kind of like going to the dentist and them drilling in your mouth, only it's not your mouth, it's your head. So there's that. But then the nurse part of me was like, man this is this is kind of neat what they're doing so it's kind of a two-sided coin if anybody can relate to that but um 
anyway, it was extremely weird. Something I hope to never experience again in my life. Yes. So that was Saturday morning, Saturday before our surgery. So we lived in ICU for a couple of days and then they did her surgery on the, the day that it was scheduled. Um, but originally we kind of hoped to be out of there in a couple of days, but because of how things went, uh, we ended up, it was prolonged basically. So that's why we were 10 days in. Um, so as you saw in the video, like we, when they told us we could leave, we were, we were literally just like running out the door, trying to best we could anyway. <laughs> yes. So, um, so we're out, we're home, she's healing. Um, there's another surgery scheduled for her uh, later. So Sarah has a surgery coming uh, in August. August 19th. August the 19th. So if you're praying with us, please continue to pray for that. Um, feel real good about how things went. I mean, we got the top surgeon, the top anesthesiologist, the top neurologist, I mean, uh, the oncologist for this disease. So. Uh, God has of, prepared the way for sure. Yeah, we definitely have a uh, a killer testimony to share later after this is all over with. Uh, yes, I can't wait to share that with you guys when we get back. Um, so here we are. So everybody's asking this question. Uh, every text I get lately is this: those who don't know, know already, <clears throat> compared to how you were feeling the weeks leading up to that. And you, how you feel now, even though you're healing and sore, tell us the difference. It is um, uncomparable, really. I still have some of the same symptoms that I had before, but the intensity of them, it, it's so different. It's like nothing compared to what I was dealing with. So, I mean, if I had to deal with this like everyday life, I think I could. So. Yeah because it's such a difference than what I was dealing with before. And I guess the body's, the body's so weird, you just find a way to adapt to it and just do what you gotta do and press on. And I guess then whenever it's gone, you realize, hey, I did this and I couldn't do this before. Or, you know, I did this and it didn't bring on this pain. So it's, um, it's a blessing to see that. It's a and big I, difference. And I think that's the surprise that everybody's getting is because a lot of people didn't even know you've been hurting for well over a year now. I, I just push through. I just, <laughs> I don't like to complain. <laughs> She's tough. Well, I don't know about that, but I, I don't like to complain. <laughs> She's unstoppable. That's what I told John Mills today. All right. Um, so we recapped everything. So, so that catches everybody up to speed where we are now. Uh, we forgot to recap this, I guess. Um, they have a disease called uh, Von Hippel Lindau syndrome. It's a genetic disorder. Um, uh, the top doctors that study it are here at MD Anderson in Texas and Houston. Um, we've known about it. Uh, those of you who know us long enough, she had a surgery like 18 years ago. That's what that was. It was the same thing. Matter of fact, this surgery, uh, not, not the top portion, but the back that they did this time was literally in the exact same spot as that other one. So, um, but uh, the positive side of that is, uh, he said at the age that, 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 Mandy is now um, it's very likely that she will not see or it's very unlikely that she'll see any more growth after he addresses the problems that are at hand right now I finally have an advantage to getting old <laughs> all right uh, see trying to keep a shorter video it's not gonna work well um, so thank yous first off um, I'm, I'm gonna say my piece and I'll let Mandy say hers so um, friends and family and I broke these up distinctly for a reason um, friends and family that are back home that have reached out and sent you know whatever it was whether it was just like prayers hey thinking of you checking in on us and uh, some of you are constantly checking in with with uh, me checking in on Mandy with me uh, you've sent gifts um, yeah um, so Oh, I'm trying to think. Brian and Jeannie, um, you guys like loaded our pantry up uh, uh, while we were gone. We come home and I was like, what is all this? So uh, if you want to say a thank you to them. <laughs> yes, thank you. Because honestly, the things that you sent, like just paper plates and toilet paper and paper, just things that, you know, you don't really 
think of, you know, that that just, man, just really came in handy because with the kids here at the house while we were at the hospital, they didn't have to worry about dishes. They didn't have to worry about going out and getting toilet paper or something. All that was there. So that, that was huge. Yeah. That was a huge help. It was. And, um, and not only you, uh, Jerrica, I'm trying to think of who all like sent like monetary stuff. Um, Jerrica, you, uh, you, you sent gift cards for, for meals. That was great. There's somebody else I'm not thinking of right now. And Belinda, you sent me that edible arrangement. Yeah. And I've always wanted one of those. <laughs> so that was cool. You know me so well. That's, that's, um, couldn't have came in a better time exactly, to cheer you up. Exactly. Made your whole day. I was kind of down that day um, just from, you know, just different things and appearance and, and just just girl stuff but anyway that just that really brightened my day so yes thank you everybody who back home all of you who sent stuff we love you guys and it just meant the world to us uh, words can't explain what we're feeling the gratitude we're feeling exactly. all of it was perfect um journey thank you for your gift yes um i'm trying to think of who else um and your prayers yes absolutely your continued Every, prayers, prayers. Um, but then the folks that are here also, um, our small group. So we, we, so those of you watching this who aren't part of that small group, we, uh, we had a hard time linking up, um, with anybody originally when we moved here. Uh, but God just landed us right in the lap of like some of the most amazing people. Um, and they have just pushed through. So those of you who do know us well enough, you know we're stubborn, we're hard-headed, we don't like receiving help, we don't, we don't ask for help. Um, but honestly, the uh, the whole meal train thing um, and uh, the meal train thing was something we didn't realize we needed. To be honest, um, we came home and, and and well, even when we were in the hospital, so our, some of our family was here and they didn't know the area real well and it, it was kind of left to Sarah you know it, it was just it was kind of a mess right and, um, so when our family was here uh, they got fed there was food available for them and that was amazing when we came home some of the meals kept coming uh, I think today was the last day <laughs> and uh, Samantha um, and Blake sent some some awesome spaghetti but all the meals have been amazing and it's allowed us to uh, just kind of focus here because it took us it took us quite a while to kind of get readjusted to home because yes. we hadn't slept in literally days and days and days. Exactly, and not have to worry about preparing food. It always seemed to come at the right time where like it was one day where I just really wasn't feeling all that great. Yeah. And then open up the front door and here walks in, you know, fajitas <laughs> or spaghetti or, or whatever. And it was just always just seemed to come at just the perfect time. Yeah absolutely and uh and michelle and, and joseph just driving that and realizing how hard-headed we are and just doing <laughs> doing it anyway it's exactly it's, it's very thankful uh, we're very thankful for that and um and, and not only the the that stuff there was a there was a paypal thing and what's funny is um i was like i don't know what the paypal's for well i quickly realized that just me being in the hospital with her uh, I mean, that's still, it's not cheap to eat in the hospital. I couldn't leave. If any of you know anything about MD Anderson, I was a prisoner. To be able to be with her, I was basically a prisoner at MD Anderson. Like, I had on this blue band, and I couldn't leave. If I left, I lost that spot for the day, and I couldn't come back to the next day. So for me to stay with her and be in the hospital with her, I had to literally stay there. So, I mean, it was easy. I'm burning $30 a day in food and just on myself, and then uh, the parking fees so and the, the paypal thing was like just right like it was just enough to to after I, I figured it up in my head i was like wow the paypal thing covered parking it covered uh it covered my food while i was staying there so it, it was you know and i can't say that we were in some financial burden you know during that it was just the fact that it was just a load off i didn't have to worry about it um didn't have to think about it and, and that, that's what was great i mean obviously there's some financial things we got to figure out after all this is done but that's just after the dust settles we'll got to work that out but y'all really alleviated that worry because yeah. i mean when you don't move your vehicle and it sits in a garage for you know over 10 days that really racks up a bill so but um but we didn't have to worry about that and that was because of y'all 
Yeah. So thank you. Everyone who gave, uh, just thank you. I, I think I've re reached out to everybody specifically and told them thank you. And if I didn't and I missed somebody, it was not intentional. Mm -hmm. But um, I keep going back through everything to make sure I got everybody because it was very much appreciated. And I want you to know that. Absolutely. And if you don't know, MD Anderson doesn't own the parking garages. So they don't comp the parking. Um, you pay for parking. It's about, uh, I think it's 15 or $20 a day, something like it, depending on which parking garage you're in. Um, and my truck just sat there, you know, the entire time. So it was like, I'm getting full day parking charges. Um, but anyway, so thank you to you guys. And I also want to specifically call out those of you who, um, like reached out to me during the whole waiting period, the ICU thing and, and even the day of the surgery, you know, um, Blake and Ethan and um, Joseph and, and a handful of you guys. I can't remember everybody who did, honestly, but, but uh, you know who you are and you guys done little, little specific things that I'm very appreciated. And um, we actually, um, I actually even had a, a total stranger. I wish I could thank him right now because he, he really helped me get my mind off things for like four or five hours. He sat there and talked talk my head off. And uh, his mom was having surgery and he was waiting in the same waiting area. And uh, it was it was kind of a God thing. I mean, we, we, but we began to talk about fishing and, and hunting and, and just all sorts of just random crap. And we talked for like four or five hours. So it, it, I think it helped both of us. So. That was pretty great. Um, anything, anyone else? I don't think so. Okay. So thank you. If we didn't, yes, if we didn't you, specifically you, call you. someone out, don't think it's it's unappreciated. There's just a lot been going on for the past couple of weeks, and we're trying to wrap our heads up. That's why we're doing this video. Is just like just a big like, hey, thank you. This isn't over. It's just kind of the beginning of, of the next few months. But um, so speaking of that, so what's next? Um, so we saw, already said Sarah has a, a Sarah, Sarah has her surgery August the 19th middle of August time, time frame and the idea the, the surgeon wanted to get Mandy's done because hers was critical uh, and he called that <laughs> he called that well because it turned out to be yes. more critical than he even thought that's the reason we ended up in the in the emergency room um, Sarah's is a uh, it's not a simple procedure either. It's pretty, um, it, it's, it's dangerous. They're going to go down in the top side and, uh, take out a, uh, a tumor. Hers is actually a little weird. Hers actually, they don't think it's actually related to the disease, but they do think it's, uh, quite possibly causing all of her symptoms that she's been dealing with. So for those of you been around Sarah, she's been dealing with this for, uh, a good six eight months or more um, while she was in college she was starting to struggle in school and um, we were just kind of like oh just keep pressing through and pressing through kind of feeling I'm, I'm feeling a little guilty about that we just kept trying to push her and push her and uh, now we you know we realize that it wasn't just everyday headaches she 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 has some issues she has some things going on um, so even though hers isn't a simple thing, he did make it sound like it was a, it was something he does quite often. So um, they they feel like they're going to be able to go in and get at least they're going to shoot for a hundred percent of getting it out. But there's always a um, small chance that they're going to leave some, and then you know that's something to watch in the future. But that should take care of Sarah. We're hoping prayers for that 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 what he's doing is the fix because there's there's never a guarantee. Uh, even with Mandy's, there wasn't a 100% guarantee that that was all the problem. It's just what looks like the smoking gun. So that's what he goes for. Um, and then Mandy's got another one. And um, probably going to do it in like, you know, set late September or, or uh, October time frame. So she's got another one to do this year um, after she heals from the first one and gets after we get Sarah taken care of and healed. Um, so we just started, we just at the beginning of this, um, my job's allowing me to work from home throughout all of this to try to keep us from, uh, catching COVID or, uh, after watching the news today, I guess, uh, monkey pox too is the new, the new pandemic problem. But, um, we're just trying to stay safe and stay isolated. 
uh, we've been trying to get out of the house a little bit, but it's too hot and and she can't get sweaty and things like that. So that's kind of hard when it's 100 degrees outside literally every day. But that's what's next and that's what's coming. Probably won't um, cover anything until we get, you know, I'm sure everybody will want updates on Sarah. And we'll, I'll, we'll, we'll pick that up when that time comes. Um, so this will be the last for probably about a month at least uh, before we do that. So anything else you want to say? Um, no, just be in prayer for us. Um, it's kind of hard on Sarah. She's supposed to, she was supposed to go back to school the day that she's having her surgery. It was supposed to be her first day back in class. So that really? weighs heavy on her. Um, you know, because she was excited. She graduated a year early. She was actually ahead of the game. So now she feels like she's going to be behind. Um, and, and she misses her friends. So it, it, it's a hard time for her. And, and she's scared about the surgery. So just just be in prayer for her. She's strong. I know she'll be fine. But she she does need um, prayers for strength. And any of her friends watching, just shoot her a text and check on her. It'd mean the world to her. Absolutely. It's a it's it's a scary it's a scary thing. It's a lot to it's a lot to stomach at once. But we're gonna make it. God's brought us this far. Yes. And like I said before, that's I say I say that with a little grit in my teeth and a tear in my eye sometimes, but I, I know it to be true. I know it's gonna be it's gonna be okay. It's just the the <clears throat> the path is not always uh great. So it's the part that scares me and, and it's totally out of my control. It is. It, it is that totally out of our control, but honestly, I have never felt closer to God in my life than I do right now. Yep. So, I know that He's here, I know that He's with us, and I know that He's going to see us through. But you guys just keep praying for us, and we'll appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, we love y'all. Thank you for everything, and uh, yeah, keep keep in touch with us, and uh, definitely hit us on Facebook if you got any other questions that I can answer. And if anybody's watching this, I've been tagging the VHL stuff. If anybody's dealing with VHL um, and has any questions for, for Mandy, I mean, we've, we've done yes. a lot of research. Yes. Over the years, we've learned a lot. Uh, Dr. Jonah Ash has taught us an awful lot. Um, so uh, Mandy seems to be a, uh, a fortunate case uh, of, of VHL, but uh, definitely not unheard of. So if you've just found out that you've got this, don't think that, you know, it, we could she could share her story with you or, or I could yes, she could I'm share it vicariously through me however you want to do that I can I can share whatever we know uh, I don't we, mind we don't know everything but no. it's such a rare disease but what we do know we would really be willing to share to help anyone out yeah absolutely so with that talk to you guys later <laughs>